This is Jim Williams with the Hurricane City Tropical Update for November 4th, 5.30 p.m. Here's the animation using the Herd Track program of Tropical Storm Tomas as the system is now southeast of Jamaica and they should get some gusty winds tonight but all focus is going to be on Haiti. Let's zoom in on this map and show you exactly what's going to happen here. As you can see this approaches Haiti as a 60 mile an hour tropical storm in the early morning hours tomorrow and then as we put this in motion the closest point of approach to Port-au-Prince Haiti which is our current feature at Hurricane City will be roughly 145 nautical miles to the west of Port-au-Prince and you can see the yellow circle uh, is about uh, I'd say probably 30-40 miles to the west of Port-au-Prince those are sustain or gust 2 tropical storm force so even the 35 mile an hour winds out of the south are going to remain well to the west of Port-au-Prince which is excellent news however there are areas down in here on the peninsula that were also affected by the earthquake so there's still going to be gusty winds but the big story in Port-au-Prince and the earthquake hit areas is going to be the rainfall and I'll get to the details on the rainfall in a minute but there's some mountainous terrain and strip mountains and a people living in 10 cities it's just an absolute mess in, in Haiti and tomorrow they're going to getting the, be getting the worst of what Tomas has to offer as it passes off to the west now what the area that could be getting the worst out of this is Baracoa Cuba that's another city in the Hurricane City database and uh, that will be getting a direct hit from Tomas as it uh, approaches uh, gaining hurricane strength right here it'll be about 70 mile per hour winds inside that aqua circle and then Great Inagua in the Bahamas will take a direct hit as this is approaching Category 1 strength uh, tomorrow evening. This will be Friday evening. So this will be a very kind of a quick motion through the uh, Windward Passage, and which is good news for Haiti. They won't have to have too much rain for too long of a period of time. It's between now and tomorrow night that they'll get the worst of it, and then that should pass on by. And then we're talking the Turks and Caicos Islands. Here we have a minimal Category 1 hurricane moving through the eastern portions of the Bahamas and then the system slingshots up into the north near Bermuda. There's a few models that want to hang it up down near the Bahamas and I'll get to that in just a second. The Hurricane Hunter has been flying around out there and uh, white dots indicate the center of circulation. Let's look at um, this morning's observations. They were out there flying around. They only found a uh, 998 millibars and then we have 998 millibars in the second vortex message and only winds of around 35 miles per hour at the surface gusting to 42 at flight level and then we go out uh, just a few hours ago they were out there again 997 millibars surface winds 42 knots and the maximum flight level winds also 42 knots so we're talking a 45 or a 50 mile an hour tropical storm at best now if we add the uh, wind observations at the surface out here and let's take a look at what's over here near Port-au-Prince or as far east as where Port-au-Prince would be as this passes by we're talking uh, 8 to 10 mile an hour winds now let's look at these barbs up here also uh, talking about 8 to 10 to 15 mile an hour winds so the winds are very light out here to the well to the east of the center where uh, when it passes the windward passage here the winds near Port-au-Prince should be pretty light you know 15 to 25 mile an hour winds so the wind is not going to be the big factor if the forecast verifies it's going to be the rainfall which is good news last thing we need is all those tent cities blowing down in the wind now let's get to our images this is the best performing model of all the models so far um, running uh, 40 let's see today we ran 45 different model combinations and the EGRR which is the uh, UK met model is indicating that this is going to pass through the windward passage and hit near uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands then get hung up down here near the Bahamas now running all the models about six uh, let's see seventeen percent of the models indicate that this is going to get hung up between Bermuda and the Bahamas and not move to the north uh, so that means about basically eighty percent of the models are indicating this is going to get slung shot off to the north and become an extra tropical system as opposed to only twenty percent roughly that want to keep it down near the Bahamas but this is the best performer the EGRR model or one of the two let's go to the next best performing model and this is the aviation ensemble model number twenty this has only been off by about 78 miles 
at 120 hours so it's been the best performer amongst the main models uh, 45 different model combinations this has it clipping the east tip of Cuba near Baracoa hitting near Great Inagua in the Bahamas and heading through the Bahamas and north uh, well to the west of Bermuda and out to sea becoming extra tropical so the two best models one's indicating it's going to get hung up near the Bahamas the other one has it slingshotting into the North Atlantic but I did run all the models as I said 45 of them 91 percent now take it closer to Cuba than they do to Haiti only about four to five percent of the models now take it through Haiti and about eight percent take it into Jamaica and East Cuba and uh, like I said 17 percent hang it up uh, between Bermuda and the southeastern Bahamas right in here now uh, Bermuda we have about six percent of the models that actually take it right over Bermuda Bermuda's had a rather active hurricane season so they may have yet another threat from a named storm but this should be coming extra tropical and very weak at that time because the wind shear is going to be ridiculous up in here by the time it gets north of the Bahamas all right let's uh, take a look at our next image here is the wind probability maps and the red area in, on this track indicates hurricane force winds let's zoom in on this and you can see the tropical storm force gust extend just offshore Port-au-Prince again the, the tropical storm sustained winds will stay west of Port-au-Prince if the forecast verifies the tropical storm sustained winds will be in eastern Cuba and the hurricane force winds will be throughout the southeastern Bahamas Turks and Caicos Great Inagua and then the system will weaken it as it heads off to the north Here's an elevation map of, of uh, southern Haiti, and you can see Port-au-Prince right over here, and that's the earthquake zone. In fact, uh, well, actually, let me pan this out a little bit. There we go. The red circle is the earthquake zone, and that extends over to here a little bit. So basically, the tropical storm force winds are going to remain west of this line right here, and the lighter winds will be over Port-au-Prince. That's not to say they won't get a gust or two to tropical storm force, but again, it looks like the worst will stay west of there. What we need to be concerned about is notice these mountain ranges here, 8,700 foot mountains, 8,200 foot, all here south of Port-au-Prince, and these were hard hit areas in the earthquake, so we're going to watch for flooding from the, uh, from the rain coming in from the south into Haiti uh, for the next 24 hours. Here is a picture of downtown Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Notice the the hills and mountains over here in the back all in here and that's all stripped vegetation and the water runs down the mountains and into these neighborhoods and floods everybody we just wish these people the best luck they're going to need it over the next 24 hours or so here's the wind shear analysis from the University of Wisconsin showing what's the reason this system is not really strengthening that much and I'll show you a close-up visible in a minute is the high pressure ridge it normally would have to be right over the center of circulation to allow this to build up in the atmosphere and have a perfect machine so to speak with the low level flow coming in underneath the center of circulation and ventilating out the top of the storm what we have is the high pressure is off to the south so the winds are blowing off to the north it's from southwest to northeast over the center of circulation they're not allowing the low level circulation to align with the mid and upper level circulation so it's basically not vertically stacked and that's why the system is very disorganized and if I show you a visible here in just a second uh, let me get to that visible shot you can see that the center of circulation is a little bit decoupled from the actual blob of convection let's pick it out it's right here there is the center of circulation on the visible shot and all the convection is over here notice these rain bands out in here are going to be heading into Haiti but again those are light winds inside that rain there's just going to be heavy rain bands coming in uh, make no mistake even though the winds are not going to be strong in Haiti uh, at, like they are in Cuba and the southeast Bahamas they're still going to get a lot of rain rain is going to be the big story so don't uh, let your guard down in Haiti you have a lot of rain on the way probably five to ten inches at least but that center is decoupled and unless you see the moisture building all the way around the center you're not going to have a strengthening system and this very well may not even make it up to hurricane strength as it moves through uh, East Cuba and into the Bahamas here's the water vapor loop and you can see our scoop coming it was coming yesterday it's still coming off to the east uh, there's our flow out of the southwest encroaching on tropical storm Tomas 
and Tomas should soon begin to turn off to the northeast, and I think it's just going to go like this and shoot on out to sea. I don't really see this stalling out, although it is possible it could stall out somewhere in this area right here. We'll have to watch it going into next week, but the wind shear should be really strong behind this, and this will not regenerate even if it does get stalled out north of the Bahamas. Let's look at the intensity models on, on this system, and the best performing model on intensity is the NGXI, uh, the Navy and uh, no gaps interpolated model and this has it at uh, 5.4 knots off at 120 hours it's the blue blue line right here and this has it only getting up to uh, 56 knots that's around uh, 60 to 65 mile per hour winds uh, as it approaches Haiti and it gets just north of Haiti rather and then it levels off and uh, makes a little bit of a comeback here at around 70 miles per hour as it gets up near Bermuda so we'll have to see about that in the North Atlantic uh, of course it would be extra tropical and that wouldn't be unusual for that to happen but pretty much keeping it as a strong tropical storm but no hurricane strength that's the best performer now the uh, AVNI aviation um, interpolated model version of the GFS has this up to 80 miles per hour that's the strongest Let's go look at the early, the late cycle models, and the strongest here is the GFDL has it getting up to around 105 to 110 miles an hour uh, at day four, which would be north of the Bahamas. So we'll have to see if that pans out, but that looks highly unlikely. So that's about it for now. I want to make a mention on the front page of HurricaneCity.com. Click the Hurricane TV button starting tonight. Uh, myself and Bill Phillips will be tag teaming back and forth uh, doing coverage of whatever we can find media wise from Haiti and the Southeast Bahamas as this approaches. Uh, we'll be doing this for about 24 to 36 hours. I'm going to have the ham radio scan going. We'll check all the hurricane frequencies. Bill will be pulling up radio from the Bahamas and um, Haiti. And uh, we'll have, we have, even have local uh, Caribbean stations from South Florida that may have information about what's coming in out of Haiti. So tune in for that, HurricaneCity.tv. Any good uh, archive audio or video, we'll make an archive for the archive subscribers. But as of now, there's no plans for a hurricane warning show on this system. It is, remains very weak. Uh, we'll uh, have uh, sorted audio and video over the next few days. Check out HurricaneCity.tv. And HurricaneCity.com for the latest on Hurricane or Tropical Storm Tomas could become Hurricane Tomas. That's it for now. Thank you again for visiting Hurricane City.